Welcome to One-on-One -on -one with Expert Flyer. This is your host, Lisa Kaslin, and today we're talking to Jeff Livney. He is the Chief Experience Officer and co-founder of a company called Survey. And we brought him on today because um, CETA uh, actually did a, a, an interesting survey uh, a few months ago, and they released it at the end of February that talked about how airlines are, are planning to kind of get out of the doldrums caused by, by COVID and their investment in, in really kind of advanced technologies to make you know the experience for travelers better safer and more efficient for them so welcome Jeff thanks for joining us thanks for having me Lisa yeah absolutely so before we start um, tell us a little bit about survey and then your your kind of flagship platform grab so people can kind of wrap their heads around what it is Sure. So Servi is a, an enterprise self-service platform for hospitality. Um, our, our focus is really on larger venues um, and street side restaurants where we can enable guest self-service. Um, but our roots are really in the airport space. Um, we launched about five years ago um, as Grab, an app where you can order and then grab something on the way to your gate um, at Hartsfield Jackson. Um, and it's just that Grab has really grown since then. Um, we've added a lot of new features and capabilities, some different products over the years, um, geared more towards airports and airlines um, and different ways of enabling self-service. Um, and so hence the, the name change and expansion into Servi. Um, the Grab Airport Marketplace is still um, our largest product um, and you know big focus of the company and mm -hmm. creating this ecosystem across airports where we can link all of the different stakeholders, so that the different restaurants and retailers together with customers um, through a variety of different digital channels in partnership with our airport partners. So has, uh, since since COVID uh, began, did, you, did how did that affect your business? Did it, did it increase um, the, the desire of these various companies to partner with you or not so much? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question. So, um, you know, when, when COVID first hit, I mean, everything came to a grinding halt for, you know, a, a month or two there, right? All of the restaurants and stores shut down and, and everything was really in sort of recovery mode at that point. Um, what we then saw was a very profound interest by the industry in adopting this type of technology much more holistically than we'd ever seen before. Um, as airports started to realize that they needed to reduce touch points wherever possible, for you know, the restoration of confidence in travel um, and the airport experience. You know, a lot of surveys were coming out um, that guests were viewing concessions as high touch areas. Um, so there's been a really marked um, you know, investment by the industry in enabling you know, these sort of touchless or contactless ways to order and pay, reducing touch points and kind of you know, separating spaces between mm -hmm. the guests and the employees in the airport. So, since then, I mean, it, we've really seen a, a huge improvement. We've also seen is that airports now are much more interested in being part of the solution. Um, Pre-COVID, you know, airports are really interested, but given the sort of municipality run aspect in the U.S., um, you know, many couldn't quite find a way to work with us. They'd say, well, go work with the restaurants and retailers. You know, you've, you've got our permission, but we don't really need to work together. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a really diverse and um you know, industry of a lot of different players. And so, you know, if we were to, you know, we traditionally worked with each of the different concessionaires, um, but that would be a very desperate program, right? We might have a great level of participation in one airport and then not much in another. Um, and it really wouldn't be an airport wide program. And so since COVID, we've seen a lot more airport involvement, you know, trying to fund the program and roll it out across every concession in the airport uniformly, which has been, uh, which has been really great. Oh, that is good. That's that's wonderful. So I'm, I'm just curious. Do you, uh, and I'm not putting it on the spot. I've just it just came to my to my mind right now. Has there been any uh, you know evidence based data that speaks to the uh, reduction in in you know virus transmission or anything like that as a result of incorporating this type of touchless technology? 
N- not, I mean, not specifically to survey. I mean, I think what, you know, what we all know is, you know, by reducing contact, you know, adding more, you know, physical distance, you know, between different people, you know, the, the data is certainly there, right? Yeah. And so, you know, things you've seen like plexi partitions and so forth, um, you know, absolutely help. And so the, the technology definitely contributes to that. You know, think about a traditional guest experience where you walk up to the front counter, you know, either at a, you know, quick service restaurant, um, you know, hopefully nowadays they have it where you swipe your own card, but you're going to tap or, you know, put dip your chip, but, but many still don't. Um, right. And, and you have to be fairly close to the, you know, the partition there. Um, someone's going to hand off your order. Um, how do they hand your order to you, you know, mm-hmm. um, through a partition, et cetera. Um, so, you know, by reducing a lot of those touch points where guests can order themselves, they don't have to be, you know, with an employee to place an order. They can pick up their order from a shelf or, you know, some sort of handoff, uh, a locker, for example. Um, that definitely reduces a lot of touch points. Same thing mm-hmm. at a table service restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you think about physical printed menus. Mm-hmm. You know, those are dead now. Um, and mm-hmm. just even the payment side where, you you know, you'd ask for the check. They bring you a piece of paper and that little black folder mm-hmm. that everyone's been touching. You give them your credit card and the, the staff member touches your credit card, brings it back. We can reduce all of that touch point and also keep the employees in, in different areas, right? So by reducing as many touch points, it keeps the staff more focused on preparing food and expediting it versus taking orders and taking payment and punching buttons on a POS terminal. Yeah, so I think yeah. there definitely is a contribution there for sure. Absolutely. And just so folks understand, um, the the Grab platform is not something that they would necessarily expect to see because you're kind of powering, you know, the the applications or you know other platforms uh, for airlines and these other vendors that may, may be selling at the airport. So walk us through an example of how, uh, say, American Airlines is integrating your platform. Sure. Yeah. So that, that's exactly right. I mean, while there is a Grab Airport app that you can download for iOS or Android, the vast majority of people interact with us as a feature within some other product on the day of travel. Um, airlines are a great example. Um, we're integrated today into the American and United mobile apps, um, and they make it a feature on the day of travel. Um, so it's a layer on top of the in-terminal maps um, that, that you can use for wayfinding through Locus Labs. Um, and it's also a feature that shows up um, as some sort of card on the home screen on the day of travel. Um, so in the American app, for example, if you're flying to, through, or from an airport that has Grab activated, whether for pickup or in terminal delivery, you'll see a promotion right on the home screen on day of travel that says get food on the go at DFW, for mm-hmm. example. And you just tap that, you can see all of the restaurants and stores available for ordering, whether it's pickup or delivery all native within that app. You don't have to download or know about anything else. You know, you get a receipt from Grab later, um, but it's definitely um, an embedded experience in that channel. And same thing with other channels. We have partners like Priority Pass, um, as well as, you know, if you see advertising in airports, you know, to go to LAX order now, for example, um, or see a QR code in the terminal, um, that's more than likely us behind the scenes that's powering that solution. Very cool. So right now, what what is the adoption, um, you know, across the U.S. at at you know major airports? Let's say. Yeah. So today we have our products in about seventy of the top forty five airports in the U.S. Um, in in one way or another. Some of those are airport wide programs where we have everything, um, every, you know, all the active restaurants on the platform, and then the, you know the the airport markets it, and they have you know, that sort of LIXorderNow.com experience that I mentioned. Um, and then there's, you know, varying levels of support downstream from there where we might have some restaurants on board, but not a full program at the airport. Um, so it, it's definitely something that airports are still pushing to roll out, um, you know, given the municipality aspect of the industry. Sometimes we do have to go through RFPs or public bid processes. And mm-hmm. so a lot of those kicked off during COVID and are just now kind of coming to fruition and getting those programs up and running as well. So, you know, we really think by the end of this year, you know, it will be the norm across, you know, all of the airports and it's, and it's of any size. I mean, we're in airports from Boise and Tucson up to DFW, LAX and Atlanta. Um, So it really needs to be ubiquitous as a network um, to become utilized. Yeah, that's great. And aside from, uh, 
restaurants and and I guess wayfinding. Um, are there are there other retail applications for this too, or, or it's mostly yeah, it's just good question. So that's that's certainly you know the the area that we're moving into. You know, food's definitely been the more immediate need, um, but we're seeing a blend into retail. So we've started adding some retail locations um, through various partners. Um, we're doing perfume and cosmetics um, with 360 at DFW. Um, we've added some travel essentials in a few airports. Um, and so we are starting to dip our toes into that space a bit and, and learn, right? There's different types of retail, um, mm-hmm. whether it's more of your convenience or your specialty brands um you know duty free etc so we're, we're starting to expand into those realms um, we've also started selling say day passes for the club um mm. you know certain places so you know the idea is really you know any of the commercial opportunities that are in the airport whether it's food retail services gaming etc you know should be available in a common platform yeah that's cool all right so is there anything that has surprised you or or your staff with regard to how users are implementing the, the this capability anything that sticks out <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's um i mean the last year has definitely been you know any legacy data that you know we all had is is out the window right so you know what passengers we tried to, uh, we expected behaviors etc all of that's changed uh, right. So um, we're, we're certainly relearning a lot based on, you know, who's flying at the moment. And, you know, that will continue to evolve. You know, pre-COVID, it was definitely a product that was more focused on, you know, frequent travelers, road warriors, Beat business airline travelers. crew, yeah, employees. I mean, it's people that are in the airport often um, that are looking for that, you know, ability to avoid the line, um, mm-hmm. you know, save time. Um, now that it's expanded and, it, you know, there's a bit of a touchless safety, you know, aspect to it. And the fact that over the last year, everyone and their mom now knows how to scan a QR code uh, <laughs> and use some of these things. Right. So we're seeing definitely a new audience that we had not experienced before, which means we're seeing shifts into new types of concepts. Um, you know, we're seeing more QSR um, and some you know, national brands um, versus some of the maybe more higher end cook to order brands that we might traditionally see um, mm-hmm. through our airline integrations. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, there's definitely a lot has changed. Um, the other thing that we did, um, we partnered with uh, another startup called At Your Gate late last year. And so we added in terminal delivery to the platform, which we now have in seven airports and um, closer to about 15 um, by the end of summer. And so we're oh. seeing a lot of interest there. Yeah, it's, you know, whether you want to pick it up yourself on the way to the gate or maybe you really want McDonald's or Chili's or Shake Shack, but you want it, yeah. you know, it's two terminals away. We'll bring it to you. So oh, it just great. opens up more choice now. So we're still learning oh, a lot, but um, yeah. a lot has I changed love it. COVID. The sky's the limit. All right. So before I let you go, uh, what are your predictions? Do you think that there'll be, you know, some other cool um new technology solution to surface or you know something that may already be bubbling might become more uh, prevalent in the post-covid era of air travel yeah i mean i i think we're gonna see quite a bit all over i mean we're i think we're doing some exciting things um you know which are starting to roll out whether it's you know ghost kitchens and airports and pickup from lockers or delivery um, you know, we're, we're seeing some things around robotic delivery and in some airports um, that are trying that right now. Um, so I think, you know, in the concession side alone, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming. We've got a few airports adding QR codes to the armrests so we can pinpoint, you know, you're at gate 12, seat 15, you know, down to the exact seat and make it a very relevant experience to you. Um, so I think there, there's definitely some interesting things coming on the sort of digital commerce and airport side of things, you know more broadly mm-hmm. in the industry. You know, obviously everyone's working really hard to remove as much touch as possible from the experience. Um, you know, was already underway pre-COVID, but um, you know, everything has, has escalated at this point. So I'm just really enthused by all the different things that airports are trying, you know, whether, you know, it, it's more, you know, robotics or machine learning based, you know, tools in the airport. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing 
you know, all, all sorts of advancements in, in airports these days, you know, especially as you've got some CARES Act funds to, um, you know, help airports develop and move into these products much faster than a typical municipality procurement process would run. So I yeah. think we'll see quite a bit over the next year. Good, good. It's exciting stuff. Okay, so if uh, folks want to learn more about Survey or the Grab platform, where should they go? They can go to www.survey.us to learn more about the platform, um, or they can head to getgrab.com to download the Grab Airport app for iOS or Android. All right, terrific. Jeff Livney, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.